I'm Dee Kafari. In 2006, I became the first woman to sail single-handedly, non-stop around the world, against the winds and currents. Since then, I've won a host of yachting silverware, skippered some incredible teams and boats, been awarded an MBE, and even set a few world records. But now I'm setting myself a whole new challenge. I'm swapping the vast open ocean for the beautifully scenic waterways of England's canal network as I try narrow boating for the very first time. I bumped your boat! Bumped your boat! I'm teaming up with canal boaters Fran and Rich from YouTube channel Floating Our Boat. They will be my instructors and guides as I pilot their wonderful home through the narrow canals, huge locks, swing bridges and tunnels, sampling all that there is to enjoy on the inland waterways. Yes! <laughs> In part one, I got to grips with a canal boat for the very first time, had a huge test in the shape of Foxton Locks, navigated a tricky swing bridge and managed to turn the boat around go. without sinking it. Whew, I think I need a cup of tea after that. If day two is anything like day one, then I'm in for a real treat. So I am raring to go. What a night, my first night sleeping in a narrow boat and it was just so peaceful, so comfortable. I think I slept the sleep of the dead, but I woke up to the most amazing morning, sunrise, mist on the water, it was beautiful. But uh, after all my hard work and energies into yesterday, I'm ready for breakfast, but I'm a little bit nervous about what lies ahead, so Rich, what does day two involve? Easier day today, Dee. Uh, just a few little bridges, a uh, half a mile tunnel, and then a, a couple of locks. A tunnel? Just a little half a mile tunnel. We're throwing it all in there today. <laughs> yeah. A nice cruisy day, he says, right. I have to say, I'm a little suspicious. Today might not be quite so straightforward. You need to come back when the fires are light, definitely. Mm. After Fran cooks up an amazing breakfast, it's time for me and Rich to crack on with the first task of the day. So Rich, day two, do we have to do any maintenance or do we just go? Yeah, just a simple few checks. Uh, check the oil levels, uh, water coolant level in the engine. But this canal stretch here has been a bit weedy and I think there might be a bit of stuff wrapped around the propeller. Okay, I found a few weeds for you, you found yesterday. found a few weeds yeah, yesterday, sorry. reversing into them. Okay, so where's that So we've got then? to get down in, into the hatch down there, lift out the weed hatch and you're going to have to get your hands in. I'm going down. The water's quite cold. Anything around the prop? Oh wow, look at that, yeah. That was uh, slow. Look at down. that, plastic. Turn the tide on plastic. Keep our rivers clean. It gets worse. More plastic, look at that and little rope. bit of rope. Okay, one clean prop and shaft. Nice one. That well was a done. good haul. Next up is a routine engine check. Maintenance like this is very important, as breaking down in a lock or tunnel on the canal could be disastrous. That's it, brilliant. I'm in. You're familiar with engine checks, are I'm you on the yachts? Pretty good, yeah. yeah. We have to do exactly the same, and even though we're a sailboat, we still have to do our engine checks and because we don't use it as often, it's quite important that we do make sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Beautiful. All good. And just check there's sufficient coolant. You know all this, don't you? Look, I'm just going yeah. straight there. Yeah, I can see that level nice and clean. Well, that's it. I think we're good and to no go. And no drips and leaks, yeah. which is always a good sign. Brilliant. I deem us fit to go, Skip. All checks complete, we're ready to get underway. The only disappointment was what we found wrapped around the propeller. While Rich and Fran are getting ready to go today, I thought I'd take advantage of showing you what I picked up off the rudder and the prop shaft today. All this plastic and rubbish in our waterways. People know me as an ocean advocate and I'm aware of the debris and the pollution I see at sea, but this is inland waterways on our canal system. So the problem's real and we've got to do more about it. Let's hope I don't find any more today. And we're off. And we're off, day two. I'm like a natural. As we get underway, I'm feeling excited about another day on the canals. The weather is glorious. And as we head upstream, I'm keen to find out why Fran and Rich chose to make this their way of life. 
So it's not a life for everybody, but you have taken to it. Did you always have this dream? Was it an ambition? Or like, what drove you to move your life onto a narrowboat? We'd, uh, we'd, Fran and I had come together after um, a, a rough time. Each, each of us had a, a bit of a rough time. So we, we got together six years ago and um, we started trying to live the good life by uh, being self-sufficient on a plot of land that we got at the back of the garden. We had quite a big garden. But we were selling products and it, it meant that we had to be up early in the morning, go to market, sell the products. And we just got tired. We just realised that time's moving on and it's time for ourselves now to do what we want to be doing rather than working. So we were in a fortunate position where we could sell up and I just said to Fran one day, fancy living on a narrowboat, giving it a go. And she was a bit, oh, what's this? I'm not surprised. <laughs> and we decided we'd... Uh, give it a go and we just sold it up, sold everything up and uh, bought a boat. Not this one, but the time we've been, had an older boat for three years and we've just had this one built for us this year. And uh, at the moment, we'd, I don't think we'd want it any other way. Taken to it's it like superb. a duck to water. And it's so stress-free, it's amazing. You, you can move like we are now or you can just stay put for a while. It's uh, fabulous, do as you please. Well, I think we've all learned, especially in recent times, that life is too short and you've got to make the most of it. Absolutely. And just, well-being's really important. Sadly, you just don't know what's around the corner. It's so definitely you suiting Ooh. you, this lifestyle. Thank you. <laughs> I couldn't agree more with Rich and Fran. But just as I'm beginning to relax, my first new challenge awaits further up the canal. After zipping back through a couple of swing bridges, I'm starting to feel the pressure again. Right, Rich, I see not only a bridge, but this bridge is the entrance to the tunnel. What do I need to know? Because it's coming up quick. Uh, first of all, you've got to put the lamp on. This is the first switch there. Lamp on? I first think. thing you'll notice is when you go in, it'll be black and you'll find it difficult to see because your, your eyes haven't adjusted. But it, that, that, you've got a lamp on at the front, so you should be able to see pretty well. All the lights are on inside are on, so it'll illuminate the side walls. You'll notice it's cold. You might get wet from water dripping down from the ceiling uh, but just enjoy the experience and what do i do if another boat comes the other way we'll deal with that when we get there <laughs> i see a little pin light at the end which has got to be the exit yeah i guess if i just keep pointing at that point the middle of the boat for that you can't go wrong okay hope for the best really disorientated now i'm in the tunnel I keep, I'm really zigzagging and I'm trying to tell Rich that the, tan, the tunnel's not straight and he's reminded me that it's actually my driving. Today I was super relaxed driving calmly in a straight line and now I'm in here, I keep getting sucked from wall to wall and I'm just zigging and zagging all over the shop. It's horrendous. As I try and struggle to keep the boat just going in a straight line, I'm interested to know how these narrowboats made it through tunnels like this before there were engines on them. The boats got pulled along by the horses, I get that with the towpath, but now we're in a tunnel of which I didn't even know existed on these waterways. What happened to the boats and how did they get through the tunnels? Well, they take the horses over the top on, on the hill, the towpath continues over the hill, and uh, a team of leggers would lie on planks on top of the boat and literally leg the boat through the tunnel. Because there was no engines in those days, they footwork to the boat through the tunnel. It was amazing. And when you think some of the tunnels are a mile and a half long, that's incredible, isn't it? I'm finding it hard enough to get the boat through with an engine. It's definitely up there with some of the other challenges I faced. Oh, at least on a boat going, I may have been going the wrong way around the world, but at least I, I was in control. I felt like I was in control of the boat. I don't feel like I'm in control of this boat at the moment. It's not doing what I want it to do. The boat feels a lot longer. This space feels a lot smaller. And I'm all over the shop. I'll take the Southern Ocean the wrong way any time at the moment. Fortunately, the end of the tunnel is in sight. Only a few hundred metres to go until I'm back out in the open again. Bye bye tunnel. Ooh. Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold on. Loved it. How was that? Did you enjoy that? It was an experience. I am happy we survived. 
<laughs> I didn't bump, I've done an awful job coming out. I got a bit excited that I could see where I was going. Tunnel, tick. Well done. I have to admit, I am genuinely relieved that I managed to get through the tunnel unscathed. Heading further up the canal, there's another chance for me to tackle a lock. It might not be the same size as Foxton locks, but once we arrive, there's an important job to be completed first. So I'm guessing we've got to move the weed before we open the gates. Well, this big pile of weed has obviously been pulled out. Yeah. Um, and if we don't pull that out, it's either going to get stuck in the lock gates or stuck around our prop, and that means you're back in the weed hatch. OK, so let's pull it out. It's a good idea. I don't really want to touch it because it's a bit smelly. It is stinky. You don't want to be touching it. OK, we're we good with that. I what about the big so. bit? That's fine. Well done. Another little bit of good deed done. I'm good, I'm good. <laughs> get rid of my jousting pole now. With the weed cleared, Fran and I can get on with the task of opening the lock for Rich. This is a bit heavier than yesterday. So um, this lock is very different to the others yesterday, a lot more aggressive. So I'm glad I'm this side, but I believe there's another one and maybe I'll be driving the boat, so that's a bit scary. Well, it's a lot of space, but he's literally just brought it in the smallest gap ever. And that was super greasy and quite heavy. So overall, everything's just that bit bigger, but the waterway's bigger. So I'm guessing there are bigger boats here. So now we've just got to open the paddles at the other end, let the boat down. Do we so do it slower? Cause it... A little bit more slowly. It's not so important going down when you're coming up the lock. It can really push you about. Like going we just down saw is on not. That yeah, as okay. that water's coming in, but going down isn't so much a problem. So it's just a case of opening the paddles. We've only got two going down on these ones. Just keep your eye on the front of the boat. Make sure the button doesn't get stuck anywhere. We should be there, you know. Maybe I just need to grunt up. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> she wasn't kidding. Well, I said that narrow boating was like an older generation of people. This is quite physical. So fair play. With the first lock complete, it's once again my turn to pilot the boat through the next one. And with only one of the lock gates open, it's gonna be a tight squeeze. It's doing really well, nice and steady. She needs to get the front end out a bit though. Wide load coming through. <laughs> I've taken over the whole lock, but hey, I'm still in control. I'm sorry, boss. Getting into the narrow lock hasn't proved to be too much of a problem. But seeing as this is going to be the last lock I tackle, I'm determined to make a good job getting out too. Please let me get out one gate. Boom! Oh, boom! <laughs> <laughs> but I got through one Woo gate! Woo <laughs> That was a culmination of two days of excellent training. Aww. And I feel like I've just brought it all together by like being able to stop the boat. I took the line ashore myself and I was like, yes, I'm in control. Well, the wind's picked up. I'll give you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, with that final bump, my two days with Fran and Rich has come to an end. I've had an absolutely amazing time and been well and truly tested. It might not be quite the same as sailing around the world, but it's certainly brought me many unexpected highs and lows. And I'm genuinely sad to be saying goodbye. Oh, well, I think I've got everything. Oh, Dee, it's been fabulous having you. Well, it's been such an experience. Thank you so much. Sorry to see you go. Oh, it's been great. Lovely two days. I mean, let's face it, you just gave me control of your home. Still in one piece. <laughs> thankfully, thankfully. Well, I'll let you rest in peace now and I'll be on my way. But Laura Macy's been fabulous and you're living the best life. It's suiting you. Enjoy it and all the best. It's not bad. 
Come back and see us when the fire's alight, and good luck with everything you're doing. I'm going to take you off on that. Yeah. Safe journey. Thanks very much. Thanks for having us, guys. Bye. Who knew? Two days narrow boating, something I didn't think that I was ever going to experience. To be honest, it's not for everyone. These guys have given up their lives to live on a boat, travel the inland waterways. At heart, I'm still an ocean and open sea type of guy. I need the action and the adrenaline. But I feel like I've just pressed pause on my life, just taken a reset pill and just learned to enjoy the environment around me. So I would say don't knock it till you try it. Try narrowboating, it's better than you think. Thank you.